everyone. Uh, again, my name is Michael Payne from Americans for Democracy and Human Rights Bahrain. <coughs> Human Rights in Bahrain. Uh, I'd like to start out by thanking the, our esteemed panel here for, for joining us uh, and for everyone here for showing up and uh, really showing uh, the, the continued interest in Bahrain here at, uh, at the United Nations here in Geneva. Um, I will be sort of starting out setting setting up this panel by uh, discussing the report that uh, Americans for Democracy and Human Rights in Bahrain, ADHRB, uh, that we put together uh, in the lead up to uh, Bahrain's uh, midpoint of their two point, two, uh, of their four year UPR cycle. Uh, this is their second cycle uh, there that was issued uh, in June of 2012. Uh, so the report, which I, I don't know if everyone has seen, is over on the table and available for copies uh, for everyone as well. Um, so the, uh, the Bahrain's second cycle UPR, uh, during that cycle they were issued 176 different uh, recommendations uh, which were very wide ranging in their scope, uh, offered by 63 different countries. Uh, and so of those recommendations, 158 were either accepted fully or partially by the government of Bahrain. Uh, but this demonstrates uh, really the, the breadth of of uh, human rights challenges that are facing Bahrain uh, and the widespread nature of international concern over these deficiencies in the country uh, by the, the number of countries that were involved in the process. Um, our overall findings in our report uh, uh, regarding these, these uh, recommendations uh, was not good. Uh, uh, coming up on the two-year mark, uh, we found that a majority of these recommendations have seen uh, little progress towards implementation, and there's actually a number of them that have seen uh, actions taken contrary to the recommendations that were accepted by the government. Um, so a, a few areas, I'm gonna touch on a few areas that we think are uh, rather crucial uh, within the report uh, for our full findings. Again, you can see the full report, uh, but again, they're wide-ranging recommendations that range from the use of torture, uh, to uh, human trafficking and migrant workers' rights. So there's a wide range of, of, of recommendations. Um, so to start out, at least in the area of, of criminal justice uh, and, and legal matters, um, one, uh, one troubling thing that we saw over uh, in the past two years here has been uh, in June, or July, I'm sorry, of 2013, there were 22 different recommendations that were uh, submitted, accepted, and implemented by uh, the parliament in Bahrain, uh, which criminalize uh, er different areas of freedom of expression and freedom of assembly, uh, outlawing uh, protests and gatherings in the capital of Manama. Um, and these were all classified under terrorism laws uh, and broadening those definitions. Uh, these laws have now been used to further crack down against free expression and free assembly uh, under the use of, uh, under the classification of terrorism, uh, which has then led to an even further ballooning of the number of political prisoners currently in Bahrain. Uh, as far as political prisoners go, there's uh, over three and a half thousand uh, current political prisoners in Bahrain, uh, largely under these charges of uh, freedom of assembly, freedom of expression uh, type charges. Um, so that number also includes children within that number, which is also uh, an interesting point to note, that, or a uh, concerning note as well. Um, many of the, uh, within the, the prison system uh, and within police custody, we've also found that uh, torture, again, is, a, is an issue that is persistent in Bahrain, uh, even after the initial crackdown following the 2011 uprising in uh, February and March. Uh, unlike the initial uprising when we saw a lot of high level and high profile human rights defenders targeted with arrest and, and torture. Uh, more recently, we've been seeing uh, less targeting of high profile cases, but uh, a more widespread use um, among just uh, ordinary low prof profile cases of, of ill treatment and some cases leading to torture again. Um, the, uh, to, as evidence of this, the, the uh, Special Rapporteur on Torture, Mr. Juan Mendez, uh, receives to, uh, continues to receive uh, fresh reports from Bahrain uh, regarding uh, fresh cases of torture and ill treatment. Um, and so therefore, uh, therefore further uh, showing that this is an ongoing problem in Bahrain, 
Uh, on the note of uh, the special rapporteurs and the special procedures, uh, none of the special rapporteurs or special procedures of the United Nations uh, have yet to visit uh, Bahrain uh, since the, the UPR's uh, recommendations that they be allowed in. Uh, Mr. Juan Mendez, as Hussein stated, uh, has had two trips canceled in 2013. Uh, he continues to insist on visiting uh, Bahrain to follow up on the, on the growing number of reports that his office receives, uh, yet he has yet to be able to successfully carry out a visit. Um, moving on, we also have uh, other areas of concern regard uh, freedom of the press. Uh, press freedom uh, is virtually non-existent in Bahrain. Uh, Bahrain Press uh, is not free, according to Freedom House's Freedom of the Press report, uh, as well as reports of numerous uh, press monitoring organizations uh, like Reporters Without Borders. Uh, both Reporters Without Borders and uh, Freedom House rank Bahrain in the bottom uh, countries of the world uh, as far as press freedom goes, um, even below countries like Saudi Arabia or Somalia as far as freedom of the press goes, just to give some sort of uh, comparative look at uh, the level of, of freedom of the press in Bahrain. Um, there's really only one uh, news outlet in Bahrain, official news outlet that is, is nominally independent, uh, but uh, while most of the rest of them are either controlled officially or unofficially by, by the government, um, the, but the, within independent press sources, uh, many of them face self-censorship due to uh, the wide range of, of uh, further human rights abuses that target journalists, uh, including photojournalists as well, bloggers, online activists. Um, it, we've seen just recently further, uh, further laws passed that uh, further criminalize uh, comments that are critical of the king, uh, where you can receive a prison sentence of up to seven years and 10,000 Bahraini dinars uh, for, for insults to the king. This, this is also true of, of tweeting such comments. There are currently political prisoners in Bahrain who are um, sentenced to prison sentences uh, for simply tweeting comments that are critical of, of the government. Um, so uh, moving on from there, we also have uh, civil society and, and human rights defenders, uh, which were also focused on uh, by recommendations uh, by the, the UPR review. Um, as we found in our report, again, uh, Civil society remains to be uh, constricted, the, the space that civil society has to operate in Bahrain. Um, there uh, most, are a lot of different uh, civil society human rights organizations um, have either been outlawed or banned by the government. We see a number of high profile uh, human rights defenders that are currently in prison. Um, people like uh, Nabil Rajab or Abdul Hadi Khawaja um, who are uh, members of, of uh, or human rights defenders associated with uh, international civil society uh, organizations are again in, in prison for their for their uh, actions uh, for their for their work that they do um, on behalf of promoting human rights. Um, so moving moving forward from there, um, we also have I uh, just want to touch quickly on the national dialogue process as well, which was addressed in the in the UPR. Uh, review. Uh, while we saw a um, while we saw a, a new push by the the crown prince to try to uh, restart the uh, national dialogue process after it collapsed yet again in January of this year, uh, we are while while we recognize that there needs to be a negotiated uh, political solution, uh, a domestically driven political solution to. Uh, the the crisis in Bahrain, um, we have our concerns uh, of the the new process moving forward. That it it includes many of the same deficiencies that led to the collapse of of previous efforts at the national dialogue. As uh, human rights abuses continue uh, on the streets and in prisons, uh, you see many of the uh, peaceful leaders of the opposition in in prison. Um, President Barack Obama said a recent, or not too long ago in a speech that how can you negotiate uh, openly and in good faith when the leaders of the opposition are in prison. So um, that because they remain in prison and, uh, and because of continued uh, human rights abuses again, uh, 
we see the, the same sort of deficiencies going forward for uh, leading to uh, lack of confidence in the, in the process moving forward with the national dialogue. Um, as far as some things that the international community here can, can do to uh, address these issues, again, uh, we're coming up on the halfway point of uh, Bahrain's second cycle UPR review. Um, so given that opportunity, it's, it's natural to come back to the issues of, that are facing Bahrain uh, and address them. Uh, again, June is the, the halfway point, and uh, as the Bahrain Foreign Minister, Sheikh Khaled, said in his speech last week here at the UN, uh, Bahrain has volunteered to undergo their midpoint review in the UPR process. Um, we have seen uh, in, in the past regarding the, the BICI uh, Commission, uh, Bahrain's own own uh, assessment of their progress towards implementation of those recommendations has been uh, a rather a rosy view of, of uh, what's been accomplished. Uh, and so we're curious to see, uh, to compare the uh, Bahrain's own evaluation of their progress towards their, their implementation of the UPR recommendations coming up uh, when held up against to, uh, held up against the assessments of international and independent human rights organizations uh, such as ourselves in our, our report here. Um, to see any sort of discrepancies there. Um, we, we definitely uh, call for the, the special procedures and special rapporteurs of the United Nations to be allowed to, into Bahrain to visit, follow up on the growing number of complaints that their offices continue to receive. Um, we also call for a full OHCHR mission to be based in Bahrain. We think that that is very important uh, with a full investigatory and reporting mandate as well. Um, to, in order to ensure openness of the process, oversight of, of implementing uh, recomm these recommendations and bringing Bahrain back in line with international standards for human rights. Um, we also believe that releasing political prisoners would be a very good uh, confidence building measure in, in moving forward with political solutions as well as um, coming back again in line with, with international standards for human rights. Um, short of seeing some of these positive steps uh, moving forward, uh, we believe that the OHCHR, that the HRC could move forward uh, reasonably uh, with, with resolutions on Bahrain moving forward uh, in order to, to help Bahrain come back in line with their international standards. Uh, I'm sure that a lot of these points can be elaborated by my fellow panelists here, and so with that, I'm going to conclude. Thank you. Thank you.